Hi, in this lesson, we'll look at the topic on disaccharides, which is a type of carbohydrates. Disaccharides for the prefix, okay, the di will refer to two, which means double. So what is a disaccharide? A disaccharide is a double sugar made of two monosaccharides chemically combined together by a condensation reaction. What are some examples of disaccharides? They would include, number one, maltose, which is found in malt and barley. Number two, sucrose, which is found in large amounts in sugarcane stems in sweet fruits and certain storage roots such as carrots. The third one would be lactose, which is a milk sugar found in milk. What is a condensation reaction? A condensation reaction is a chemical reaction in which two simple molecules are joined together to form a larger molecule with the removal of one molecule of water. Condensation reaction is used to form disaccharides. As you can see on your left, there are two molecules of monosaccharides that are chemically joined together to form a disaccharide. In the process, a molecule of water is removed. Now, if we recall in our first lesson, a monosaccharide each has a chemical formula, which is C6H12O6. So if we have two of them chemically joined together, in total, we would have 12 carbon, 24 hydrogen, and 12 oxygen. On the right-hand side, There is no carbon. On the right hand side, there is two hydrogen and one oxygen. Okay, by the conservation of mass, all right, for disaccharides, the number of carbon will still be 12. The number of hydrogen would therefore be 24 minus 2, which is 22. The number of oxygen atoms would be 12 minus 1, which is 11. To summarize, all right, the chemical formula of a disaccharide would therefore be C twelve H twenty two and O eleven. Let's move on to our first quiz. What is the general formula of disaccharides? Question number two, what accounts for the different biological and chemical properties of the different types of disaccharides? Let us have one minute to consider the answer. The answer to the first question is C12H22O11. That is the chemical formula of disaccharides. 
Question 2. What accounts for the different biological and chemical properties of the different types of disaccharides? It would be the different arrangement of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen atoms within each molecule that accounts for the different biological and chemical properties of the various types of disaccharides. Now let us look at how condensation is involved in the formation of the different types of disaccharides. In the case of maltose, it will consist of two glucose molecules chemically joined together by condensation reaction to form a maltose molecule and a molecule of water is removed as a byproduct. In the case of sucrose, it will involve the condensation of a glucose molecule, a fructose molecule to form sucrose and the byproduct is water. The third example of disaccharide is lactose. It will consist of a glucose molecule chemically combined with galactose via a condensation reaction to form lactose and water. Second quiz. Name the two monosaccharides that make up maltose. Question 2. Name the two monosaccharides that make up sucrose. Question 3. Name the two monosaccharides that make up lactose. Let us have one minute to consider the answer. Okay, answer to the first question. Maltose is made up of two molecules of glucose chemically joined together. Question 2. Sucrose is made up of a molecule of glucose and a molecule of fructose chemically joined together. Question 3. Lactose is made up of a molecule of glucose and a molecule of galactose chemically joined together. Now let us consider this, okay? Now if we can have two monosaccharides chemically joined together to form a disaccharides, in the process a molecule of water is removed, it is possible to actually break down a disaccharide in the presence of water to form two molecules of monosaccharides. This reaction is known as hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is the reverse of condensation. I repeat again, hydrolysis is the reverse of condensation. Hydrolysis that occur in organisms is known as digestion. And digestion is catalyzed by digestive enzymes. Okay, now let us look at the hydrolysis of maltose by the enzyme maltase. Okay, it's not something that is very strange to you, but you will actually look at it and consider that you have maltose molecule, which is digested by maltase to give you two glucose molecules. In the case of sucrose, it is digested by sucrase to give you one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fructose. In the case of lactose, which is a milk sugar, it is digested by the enzyme lactase to give you one molecule of glucose and one molecule of 
galactose. Okay, moving on, we will look at the test for reducing sugars. Now, what is a reducing sugar? Okay, reducing sugar generally refers to a monosaccharide or disaccharide that can convert copper 2 plus chemical to copper plus. Okay, how do you tell that there is actually a conversion? So if you look at the photograph, all right, copper 2 plus at the start is blue in color. When glucose is added to it or reducing sugar is added to it and the mixture is heated in a boiling water bath, it will form a Cu plus which is a brick red precipitate. To your right, you see a brick red precipitate. So each time you see the color change from blue to a brick red precipitate, it tells you that a reducing sugar is present. Okay, the chemical that is used to test reducing sugar is known as the Benedict's solution. And inside this Benedict solution, which is blue in color, it contains Cu2 plus. And if there is a reducing sugar, it will change to give you a brick red precipitate. So what are some examples of reducing sugars? They will include substances like glucose, fructose, galactose, maltose, and lactose. Take note, sucrose is a non-reducing sugar. How to carry out Benedict's test? To 2 cm cube of glucose, all right, as you can see over here, I have uh, two test tubes, okay, one containing glucose and one containing water. Each test tube will contain 2 cm cube of solution. So on to my left, I have 2 cm cube of glucose solution and to my right, I have 2 cm cube of water. To each test tube, I added in 2 cm cube of Benedict's solution. So 2 plus 2 will give you 4 cm cube. All right. Water, 2 cm cube plus another 2 cm cube of Benedict solution. Okay. Next, I will place both test tubes in a boiling water bath. Take note, it is a boiling water bath. I heat both test tubes for 5 minutes. For 5 minutes, I heat both test tubes for 5 minutes and I record the observations at the end of 5 minutes. So after 5 minutes, I will remove the test tubes and put it on a test tube rack. Okay, how do you interpret Benedict's test results? If there is reducing sugar, all right, the contents will turn from the initial blue solution to a brick red Precipitate. Precipitate means that there's a solid substance found in the liquid mixture. In the case of water, the contents will remain blue. All right, indicating that reducing sugars are not present. Let me just repeat. In the case of presence of reducing sugars, the contents will turn from a blue solution to a brick red precipitate. If reducing sugars are not present, the Benedict solution, the contents will remain blue. Okay, in the next slide, which is our final slide, it shows that the, how Benedict's test results would vary when the amount of reducing sugars are different. 
So if you look at the photograph, you will see that as the concentration of reducing sugars increases, the intensity of the brick red precipitate increases as well. Okay, to conclude, all right, disaccharides, as we have learned earlier on, is made up of two monosaccharides joined together by condensation reaction. The reverse of condensation is hydrolysis, all right, involves the breakdown of a disaccharide to form two mo molecules of monosaccharides. We have also learned how to test for reducing sugars using Benedict's test. That's all for today. Thank you.